My first Uinta beer had to be a Baba, which is a black lager or a German Schwartz beer. Uh, it was very smooth, dark, rich, chocolate malt, kind of smoky on the finish, but dark and sort of mysterious. And I just thought, that's a unique brewery. I need to find out who that is. Do you remember drinking your first Uinta beer? Cutthroat Pale Ale. I had a cutthroat. That is a great beer to start out with. It was a Baba. I had that some time ago. To paint the picture for me, if you can, if you can remember, I know it's... Uh, I might have to make something up. That's fine. So I was, um, I was setting off on this skydiving uh, exercise, and I was a little nervous. <laughs> He's kidding. If you talk to anybody that works at U Into Brewing, you're going to find that they spend a lot of their time outside. We make beer that we want to drink, and since we're outside, that's how we enjoy our beers. Uinta was founded in 1993 by a gentleman named Will Hamill, who had moved from the Pacific Northwest to Salt Lake City, primarily for the lifestyle. Loved to ski, loved to backpack, hike, fish, those sorts of things, which draws a lot of people to Salt Lake. At that time, you could count the number of breweries that existed in Salt Lake City on one hand, and really all you needed was a couple of fingers. So when he started it up here, the goal was to serve a, a local community, and therefore we were named after one of the local mountain ranges. So our brewery is positioned right between the snow-packed mountain range and the Great Salt Lake. And the existential crisis of global climate change is apparent to us every single day. From the windows of our brew house, you can see the Wasatch Front and the fact that there's less snowpack. And if you stand on top of our fermenters and you look west, you'll see the Great Salt Lake, which we know is getting lower and lower. So it's inescapable, and that creates an acute appreciation for the finite resource that we have in water. It's a little bit of a, a dance, deciding how much water to add on, but we don't want to add too much water because then that dilutes our gravity too much right. and also creates a lot of waste. So finding where that line is and stopping just before it is what's going to get us the maximum savings on our water. The Browcon brew system tracks everything, and so we're able to hit things on the nose have them do exactly what we want. It saves thousands of gallons every year. What we've done is tried to take stock of our overall operation and look for efficiencies. And one just obvious one from a sustainability perspective is ensuring that our batches make it to market. So when we're making a batch of beer, doing everything we can to not lose it and have to some mishap that might occur. It might be equipment or it might be uh, a yeast that's not performing as we want it to be. And so really investing in our lab allows us to monitor that fermentation process I sense there's a lot of beer science happening around here. There is. Oh, we yeah. have two different labs here at Uinta. Yeah. So you're not just brewers, you're, you're scientists. A little bit. Yeah, cheers just, to just beer enough. science. Cheers. Beer science. <laughs> but it's not all about labs and fancy equipment. As the old saying goes, waste not, want not. Uinta ran the numbers and realized it no longer made sense to bottle their beer. And since aluminum cans are more easily recycled and easily transported, they put their bottling line up for sale. We're gonna be getting green to be green. Sustainability at Uinta has always been part of our DNA. We're about 85% wind, 15% solar, thanks to a solar array that was installed in about 2011. We signed on as the very first business in the state of Utah in 2001 to a wind power program that was developed by Rocky Mountain Energy. And it really mattered to the people of Uinta, and thus the slogan, Earth, Wind, and Beer, became a part of our, our folklore, so to speak. Much like brewing a batch of beer, we can't do it uh, all by ourselves, we need a team. And so we've always been focused and committed to engaging the community and working together to solve problems. Uinta found a community partner in Wasatch Resource Recovery, Utah's first and only anaerobic digester that converts food waste into natural gas, powering thousands of homes across America. We really started our relationship with Wasatch Resource Recovery as part of our program to conserve water. Salt Lake City's water treatment plant processes wastewater before it goes into the Great Salt Lake. But it turns out the yeast and sugar that breweries often send down the drain, well, that doesn't go down as easy as the beer does. We immediately looked for opportunities to be able to, to separate those waste streams so that we're not making a job harder for the city. We were lucky to find a partner in Wasatch Resource Recovery. They really want our sugar water and our spent yeast, and they need it to be able to run their program. We've been partnering with Uinta Brewing since November of 2019. We've brought in approximately 6,000 tons of material from Uinta. They've had a strong commitment to diverting food waste away from the landfill. 
That amount of food waste allows us to produce roughly 18 million cubic feet of renewable natural gas, which is enough to provide energy needs to about 244 households for a year. We developed a really great symbiotic relationship where they have what we need and we have what they need, and it creates a wonderful sustainable cycle. It's not just about what we're doing inside these walls, but also how we're doing the outreach and promoting those good causes and trying to gain awareness and uh, letting the public know what they can do to help support all of the things that we need to do to have a cleaner environment. Of course, that goes along with the things that we do here inside Uinta Brewing Company. I started working at Uinta as a brewer, which is a shift position. And the weekends, I would show up at 5 a.m. and I'd turn on the brew house lights and start mashing in. You start getting into the rhythm of the equipment and the pace, and there's a beautiful solitude in brewing beer. But even though you're alone, you know that you're part of this larger brewing team. And at the end of your shift, you have to hand off that batch to the next brewer you're part of something larger. We work as a team, we'll taste something in sensory, mm, you know, this is kind of leaning in this direction a little bit. Let's uh, tone down on the bittering hop, or hey, maybe we need to add a little bit of malt to get our ABV more in spec or uh, without making any other adjustments to it. So kind of riding that Venn diagram of consistency. Because no matter what, you know, this is an art and a science, and we put both together and come up with a consumable solution that people are gonna be attracted to, that want to enjoy, in social occasions or with friends. So ultimately, beer brings people joy and brings people together. And we wanna be a part of that experience in a very positive way. So my team takes the commitment of creating that joy very, very seriously. Cheers. 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 Wow, this is beautiful. I'm getting a lot of energy from these colors. First up, we have 801, our German style Pilsner. Crisp, clean, everything you want on a hot day. Cold day's fine too. It is one of the beers that I'm most proud of. Uh, also my favorite to drink last year at the International Beer Awards. We got gold for this in the German Pilsner category. Oh, wow. No, this is uh, one of Uinta's most charitable brands. Trails Utah, Utah Clean Energy, Utah Avalanche Center. Proceeds from this beer have all gone to those different charitable organizations. I feel like I'm in a beer garden right now. And the wind is blowing yes. my face. Yes, exactly. And every sip I take is for a good cause. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Well, cheers again. Cheers. <laughs> this is Uinta's 5% flagship, Cutthroat Pale Ale. Classic pale ale with piney and floral notes. It is also one of Uinta's most decorated beers in terms of awards that it's won at different competitions. So if you smell the aroma, it has a really nice bready, uh, crackery, kind of like a fresh baked bread character. A little bit of caramel note. It's met with a little bit more hot bitterness. It doesn't have a ton of sweetness, but still slight caramel notes, uh, the same that you get from the nose. It's very, very um, outdoorsy. Cheers. Yes. Ooh, cheers. Earth, wind, and beer. Yes. You got it. <laughs> Next we have Caravan Double IPA. It's my favorite hoppy beer at Uinta currently. My favorite Uinta beer is whichever Uinta I have in my hand at the time. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm an IPA person. Lately, Caravan IPA has become my new favorite. It's a nice in-between for people that like hoppy beers and they've dipped their toes in the hazy IPA waters, but they still like a beer with really firm bitterness, but mm -hmm. more of the current tropical hop flavors. And so I think this kind of bridges the gap between old school West Coast and and new school hazy. Mm. Oh yeah, that's so nice. That's like a vacation. Is it true that in the mountains, if you have a beer in the mountains and then if you have a beer at sea level, it affects you differently? That it does. Yes. We, if you go up uh, the Cottonwood Canyon, it's about a, a 2,000 foot plus elevation gain, so it'll get you pretty quick. Really? That's blowing my mind. I don't know if I can drink this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's delicious. This does not look like beer. It's not quite beer, but it's fermented. Here we have our Westwater Hard Cherry Liming. Everyone notices the color out, outright, but it has a really nice cherry flavor, almost like on that Hawaiian punch side of things. Totally. With a little bit of sweetness uh, and some acidity to kind of balance mm -hmm. it. So like different than your typical hard seltzer, but it still is within the same like calorie and carb requirements. Yeah, this has way more flavor. This is poppin'. This is like a... Um, <laughs> 
I don't know, it's very nostalgic. It's an adult freeze pop in yeah, liquid Yeah, exactly, form. a freeze pop, <laughs> yes. Wow, cheers. cheers, this is delicious. Thank you. <laughs>after being in the beer business for over 30 years, a lot of people ask, what's new in craft brewing? The way that this industry has survived for 30 years has been breweries that have focused religiously on the quality of the beer itself. And that's something that we stay focused on and I think is gonna keep us around for another 30 years. We're the number one craft beer in the state of Utah from a volume perspective, and that gives us a, a lot of advantages, but it also means it's a lot of responsibility to continue to serve the, the community in which we live and, and work. But through it all, we've managed to make you into better and stronger, uh, and certainly still representing the heartbeat of the state of Utah.